Welcome to Speed Bump Garage. My name is Kent and we are finally back on our 69 Volkswagen Beetle. This is an old show car and kind of a recap of where we got it right at 11 months ago, which would have been August of 21. I purchased this car off Facebook Marketplace. I think it was probably the second or third car on the channel and this is a really awesome car. It's an old show car built by a true Volkswagen enthusiast. This guy had everything Volkswagen. His whole house was decorated in Volkswagen stuff. Really neat guy. And I'm very fortunate to have gotten my hands on this car. So when we got it, it had been parked since about 2005. So this car, he ran the show circuits with it in the nineties really hard. Uh, this was a, what he called a radical custom. That's what class he always entered it in. And about 2005, he kind of lost interest. He had some other Volkswagen projects and this one just kind of set. And in our first few episodes on it, we got it running, we drove it a little bit. But if you remember, the wiring was an absolute disaster. This car's had a lot of stuff deleted on it, a lot of stuff shaved. And like the, the marker lights are gone off the front, but all those wires were still there. A lot of them were shorting out on stuff. It was just, kind of a form over function build. The guy really wanted it to look cool, but he didn't necessarily take all of his modifications the full way home and clean them up the way that they were supposed to be, but he did get it to appear really well. So that's what we've been working on. I've done a lot of it off camera because it's been so boring trying to sort through the wiring on this thing. It's had so much stuff added to it. And I actually have a quick clip here of what the wiring used to look like. I got a couple pictures also. So the first thing I did was I just started pulling off all the aftermarket wiring. I tried to get it back to the original wiring harness and at hindsight's 2020, I probably should have just gutted it and started with a new wiring harness, but I like the challenge of trying to save the factory harness and I wanted everything to work that could work. I wanted everything that was still on the car to work Guys, the headlights weren't even hooked up on this car. It had no tail lights. It had no turn signals. This car was meant to drag to a car show on a trailer, push it into the car show, I guess. I don't know, because it didn't, the wiring wasn't good enough. You couldn't reliably drive it. And I'm not gonna own a car that I can't drive. So off camera, we've started tackling this stuff. Let me show you where I'm at. I think today I've got a few more things I wanna do to it. And then we're gonna load the boys up and we're gonna take it for a test drive, I hope. I haven't really driven it yet. I still need some new front tires. I've got some wheels and tires off of another Volkswagen on it right now. So let's get into today, today's video. I'm not sure what all we're gonna do, but I can tell you for sure, we're gonna take it for a drive. So as I said, I did save the original wiring harness and one of the things that I needed to save that harness was I needed a good wiring diagram to figure out what was what. And I just so happened to find a wiring diagram on Facebook Marketplace. I got a whole nother car. So I obviously I asked my wife permission. I said, honey, I'm gonna go buy a wiring diagram for the black bug. And she said, sure, dear, go get one. So I hooked onto the trailer and I went and got me a new wiring diagram. And one of the things I didn't know, I'm not really a Volkswagen guy. It's looking more like it all the time because I keep getting more of them, but the wiring on this car is a mess too. And it looks to me like from the factory, these things were kind of a disaster as far as wiring. So this little Volkswagen, I don't even know what year it is. The wiring is also not really super clean on it, but everything was there and it gave me enough information. I could kind of figure out what was supposed to go where on my car. Like I said, I don't know what year this car is, but it was just kind of a shell. It came with the motor in a box. It's been taken apart. Not a bad little car and something I thought was really weird. If you remember on my little Volkswagen, I guess they're both mine, but this Volkswagen has etched windows. This, this car was nicknamed Fool's Gold, and it's got a bunch of mountain scenes and gold painters. So I got all this kind of cool stuff etched into the glass. And wouldn't you know it, this Volkswagen has etched glass too. So I, I don't know how common that was on Volkswagens, but I have two Volkswagen Beetles with etched glass. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with this car, but the main reason I needed it was to figure out what was what on the wiring because this one doesn't appear to be modified, but uh, it's kind of a mess. Volkswagen apparently didn't loom anything up or really organize anything. They were kind of just about efficiently building cars, I think. But also, this had good tires on it, so I've got the wheels and tires off of this side on the front of that car right now. And here's my matching wheels that still need tires. These are actually 145 15s, and I can't find those anywhere, so I think we're going to have to step up to the 165s like these are. But anyways, let me show you what I've done to the wiring. And there's where we're at. I added a, this car already had an aftermarket fuse block in it, which I, it was the glass style fuse. I updated to that fuse block. Kind of loomed everything up. It's still not probably the cleanest wiring job, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. Now this car has suicide doors, so they open from the front, and it also has shaved door handles. And one of the things I added when I was rewiring it was keyless entry. That's what this block is. This is my keyless entries to open the doors. I also added some six inch speakers. These holes for speakers were already here. There was just no speaker. So I added those speakers, added some relays to open the doors for backup. So this actually has relays in it and this is manual backup. So I got buttons to open them too. Added a little ground bar there. This switch was already here, but it did not work. This is for the electric antenna, which is right there. I'll show you guys that in a bit. This is the electric fuel pump. But the main thing is everything works now and nothing worked before. It's got, it didn't have anything here. So I added these little amber lights for turn signals and park lights, hooked the headlights up. They weren't even hooked up at all. The wires were just there. And like I said, my goal was to just have everything working and I really wanted this keyless entry. So check this out. How cool is that? So we've got the keyless entry on both sides. There's a lot more outputs in that box, like, but I don't really have any other functions that I need. The doors are the only thing I really need to operate with the remote. So we can open them with that. And there's also some buttons here where the original heater controls were. And I wouldn't even have known that that's where the heater controls were if I wouldn't have had this car because all of the heater, blower motor and everything has been removed from this car. I didn't really know what switches were supposed to do what. None of them were labeled. So I've used this car for a lot of reference points because it's hard to tell where this one started. It's so heavily modified. There's so much stuff done to it. Even the, so this car has been stretched from about here down. So the front of this car kind of appears lower than it is. And you don't realize how drastic those changes are. So you come over here and look at this car. So it has been really neat having this extra car in the shop next to this one to compare the changes. It's been stretched in the back too. All these aprons are brought down lower than the original. And having this car sitting right next to it really shows you how heavily modified this car is. Another thing, it had these Frenched taillights in it and they were never hooked up. There was just some black smoked lenses in here. No, the wires were there. It didn't have any bulbs. So I mounted a couple light bulb sockets in there and then I added these red. These are actually reflectors. Let me turn them on. We even got a headlight switch. So you see that? So the guy already had these Volkswagen deals in here over smoked lenses. I just changed them out to red lenses. We have working taillights. 
headlights, and parking lamps. And I think he probably was going to do this at some point. He just never got around to it. There was no wiring there, but these Frenched inset holes were already there. So that's actually a washer with a three quarter amber light in it. Really happy with the way that turned out. Anyway, I'm sure I'm leaving a bunch out, but as you can see, I've done a lot to the car off camera. It's really just been tedious, boring stuff. I didn't want to just make a ton of videos trying to figure out the wiring because it, I took days trying to figure out the wiring because not only was stuff not hooked up and old wires were still there, a lot of the wires were oversprayed black. So the uh, most of the Volkswagen wiring diagrams I could find had colors on it, and this one obviously shows all the colors but i didn't know what colors the wires were because they were all painted black and i was scraping paint off of them it was really hard to figure out but anyway after i got all that sorted out this car had a ton of stereo equipment in it and absolutely none of it worked it had a really nice tape deck in it like i said this is a 90s show car it had some sort sort of equalizer in it it's got a big console built in it, it had where it used to have these six inch speakers up here that weren't in there anymore. It had speakers in the package tray. All that cool stereo stuff was in there, nothing worked. So I gutted it and put all new stereo in it. And I actually, I'll show you here in a minute, but I put a doubled in head unit in it that had a screen. That screen had an input for a reverse camera. And look what I added right there in the center of our Oklahoma license plate. That is a backup camera. So we're getting fancy guys. I've never, just in the last few years, I purchased my first vehicle with a backup camera. Never did I think I'd have one on a hot rod, but I'll show you guys that real quick. Once you have a backup camera, you, it kind of spoils you and you wish you had them on everything. Another thing, I don't know if you can see that, was it didn't have a turn signal switch in it at all. And I kind of see why. See how I put a turn signal switch in it? Look how close it is to the steering wheel. So I ordered a spacer for that steering wheel, which I don't have yet. Anyway, we'll have to address that later. But there's our big head unit. Let me get a light. There's our big head unit. And I'm not a big fan of having big aftermarket stereos in classic vehicles. And it would have been nice to have had a little factory looking radio here. But this console was already built. And now's a perfect spot for it. Let me show you the backup camera. The sticker in reverse. With you there. Another thing I did, there's a toggle switch under here that used to run the rear window defrost from what I can tell and all that's been deleted so that toggle switch now is a manual bypass to turn the reverse camera on so you got two ways to turn it on you can stick it in reverse and it comes on with the reverse switch or you can run that toggle up there so that was kind of neat something I'd never done and also made the tunneled electric antenna work and that sucker is tall. That's all the way up. Look at that. I can get all the radio stations of that and then put her back down. And I think that's it. And obviously, we've got a fire extinguisher in here. I'm way more confident in the wiring now, but you never know. What I've got left to do, what I'd like to do today. The car doesn't have any seat belts in it. I got a seat belt kit from J-Bugs. Right, that's the main thing I want to do today. At least want to get the back seat belts in there for the boys, which Jack will probably be riding in the front seat. So really need to get the front seat belt in. I got a new glove box. I don't know if we'll put that in just because this was kind of ratty. Obviously, seat belts are going to be our main priority. And those seat belts just came in before I started filming. I kind of started trying to figure out how they go. I ordered them from a company called J Bugs. They've had almost anything I needed for this car, but the seat belts were back ordered. Did not get them until today. And they didn't come with any instructions. 
which is probably because most people are replacing. Let's see if I can get that door open. Most people are replacing seat belts. Well, I don't have any seat belts and I don't really know where they're supposed to go. So I obviously looked at my wiring diagram there, seen where they were mounted. And I found where the seat belts used to go. And they were filled with body filler, Bondo. So I shaved that one out of there. The threads were still there in good shape. So that's where that retractable one goes for the front seat. I still need to shave the Bondo out of that side and then figure out where the center one goes. So wish me luck. I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute, try to find some bolt holes. Maybe we can get some seat belts bolted in this thing and hopefully go for a cruise. Let's get into it. All right, I got the passenger side done and as far as I can tell, that's how this is meant to go. So we've got our retractable end here. Got just our laid over buckle here. Just like that. And it did come with a sticker to put on that. And one of the things, this car is obviously not supposed to have door hinges here. So I wasn't sure that that was going to work, but it does. I do think that the car looked a little cleaner without it, which is probably why they weren't in there, because this was strictly a show car. But we've got to find our bolt hole on this side. We'll get it mounted. Then we're going to have to pull this back seat and try to mount the back ones. So as you can see, there should be a bolt hole there. And it is, there's kind of a little crack showing up where I think it is. I'm going to start with some sandpaper, see if we can figure out exactly where it is before I start drilling. Well, there you have it. We made a hole where there wasn't one. I don't, I don't think you can probably see those threads, but the threads are still in really good shape. Get that other retractable belt mounted there and we'll be done with the front. Well, the fronts are in, let's give them a try. It's pretty good, not too uncomfortable. I know it'd be better if we had a three point with a shoulder belt, but I don't have the top holes for the shoulder belts either. And these are sure better than nothing. I've built plenty of cars that didn't have any belts in them at all. But as you get older and you got little kids riding in your cars, seems like your priorities change. And I sure would feel a lot better about them riding in here if we get some seat belts. Now I need to pull the back seat so I can put the back belts in. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but this back seat is really hard to pull because it actually wraps around. This is another custom thing the guy did to the car was he built this wrap around top part to this back seat where it's got armrest on it. And it makes the bottom section really hard to get out. So I'm gonna start wrestling it, see if we can get it out. We don't really need the top part out, but I just have to lift it up to get the bottom part out. We got good help here now. These are gonna be your belts. So I better get them mounted in there good. Yeah, they're gonna be my belts.
there you have it. We got flat belts in the back. Hopefully those will get small enough for AJ. Well, that pretty much takes care of it in here. And if you remember in my other videos, it, there is trim panels that cover almost all this up. But I left it open so you guys could kind of see how far it'd come and how clean that new fuse blocks looks. Oh, I still need to hook that speedometer cable up, I just remembered. But here is, I kind of kept track of the wires that I got rid of off of this thing. All of these wires were on the car that I, the stuff I took out. That whole mess was in there. Can you believe that, AJ? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know the car came with that many wires. It definitely had a few extra wires. It's crazy that it had that many wires and almost nothing worked. The stereo didn't work. A lot of that stereo system. Headlights didn't work, taillights didn't work, nothing worked, and it had that many wires. So Glad to have them out of there, glad to have it cleaned up, and it is so nice having everything working. We even have a nice stereo, like you guys saw, we have the backup camera. Now we have seat belts, which not crazy about how they looked, but with this little guy riding in the back seat, I hate to not have some belts back there, so we're gonna have him strapped in tight. I'm gonna tidy up a few things, clean up my mess a little bit, and then we're gonna go for a ride and maybe go get this guy a snow cone. And, <laughs> yeah. and I can help clean up messes. You're gonna clean up my messes? Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys when we're cleaned up. All right, while we were cleaning the shop, the spacer came in from the steering wheel, so we've got clearance in between our turn signal and steering wheel now. I think we're ready to go. Yep. Yeah, let's go get some snow cones. What happened the last time we went to try to get snow cones on video? I don't know. What happened? I don't remember. We got there and they weren't open. Oh, so we went to the, yeah, we went to the, um... Candy. Yeah, we got candy for the... Which could be happening again. We're not positive they're open, but fingers crossed we're going to go for a cruise. And even if they're not open, at least we'll be cruising the Volkswagen, which we've been wanting to do for about 11 months. Yeah. Finally, it's time. Dad? Yeah. We were loaded up and ready, and AJ has to pee already, so we didn't even make it out of the shop. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, well, you can do it. There it goes. Cold start, even though it's 100 degrees out. <laughs> Ready, AJ? You guys probably can't see him, but he's back there. Snow cone adventure. You ready, AJ? Hey, that's my dust cap. Where? You see it out there? That black cap on the other side of the road. So I lost a dust cap off one of my front wheels. I just noticed in the shop earlier. I think that's it out there across the road. There's a car coming. Don't get your fingers, Gracie. It's hot. That's it. That's it. I almost pulled one of those off our parts car earlier. Now I, at least we found ours back. I can just put it back. Open the door for me, sir. <laughs> Going good so far. We already got new parts found on the side of the road. <laughs> We're on the highway, AJ. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know this is the highway. Snow cone bound. Let's live in the day. Yeah. Feels good. It's 100 degrees out. We really gotta live in the elements in this Volkswagen. Bird poop? 
made it to town. Idling really high for some reason. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. I might need a bigger return spring. It's got a kind of like a Weber style style carburetor on it. It's a lot bigger than the factory one. This is supposed to be a stroker engine. I don't remember the displacement he said it was. It's 19 something, I think. He said it was a common stroker kit, so if you know a 19 something stroker kit let us know in the comments because I cannot remember how big it is like it was smoking. We need to figure out what's going on with the, with the bug. It's like we were smoking a bit. Ah, it looks like this. Leaking a little bit of oil out that crank pulley. Probably dripping down on the exhaust. Well, the... There it is. The bug made it to snow big deal here in Woodward. What kind did you get, AJ? Peach. AJ got peach. What'd you get, Jack? There's several different flavors. It's called Oklahoma Sunset. It's red, white, yellow, orange. <laughs> he got all the flavors. The bug, I guess, ran really good. We probably got up to about 60 mile an hour on the highway coming over here. It's, It was getting hot, really hot. I, that big air-cooled engine probably is always going to have trouble when you drive it when it's 100 degrees outside. We're in the upper 90s right now. It's a little bit after 6 o'clock. It's just really hot to be driving it. Yeah. You hide behind the umbrella pole. <laughs> so, guys, I think that's going to be it for this time. Unless something happens on the way home, I expect it to run good and get us home. So, unless something happens, then we'll cut back in. But I think that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to have a lot of fun with this little bug. Don't really know what the plans are. Definitely need to get our new wheel or new tires on the wheels so we'll have a matching set. It looks kind of funny with the black front wheels and the aluminum rear. Yeah. So, anyways, it runs good. It was a success. We got snow cones this time. Second video, we've tried it. Finally, we made it happen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. But the first video, we broke down on the side of the road. The first Volkswagen video we broke down. <laughs> yeah, that Let's was not, not do that in this one. <laughs> right. No. Well, hopefully, we'll see you next time.